Good morning and good afternoon. Or for those that know me, they normally know that I just say good day and go ahead and get right into it. So that's what I'm going to do. So now my, my name is Bill Connor, and I'm the uh, host for the Digital Shop Talk Radio. And on today's episode, I'd really like to go ahead and, and welcome back Marty Mace and Dennis Edson. But Marty Mace is going to be here in just name only because he got um, kind of bushwhacked or sidetracked, so he couldn't make it in. But he's going to be an important part of this particular episode as far as the way he went about doing things. So this episode is about, you know, whether you're considering when you come on board with Auto Vitals or as you bring in new employees for replacements, because we all know you're either going to be replacing employees because they either age out, they move on, or for growth. The same process we talked about today is going to be used for future employees just the same as they are if you're just coming on onto Auto Vitals. So that being said, the two different mindsets are either ripping off the Band-Aid and just jumping in there and doing it and maybe um, overcoming some hurdles that go along, or maybe taking a more leisurely course, so to say. And we're going to examine both of them to go ahead and find out the pros and cons of both. So if I do my job right, and Dennis helps me along here, by the end of this episode, we should realize that even though there's a million excuses not to get started doing this today, there's not really any good valid ones. So that being said, Dennis, if you would introduce yourself and, and, and kind of tell us a little bit about your, your shop, you know, how many bays you have, service advisors, technicians, and so on, and then we'll get down into a little bit more on the topic. Sure. Thanks, Bill. Glad to be here again. Uh, I think I was on about six months ago, and enjoyed that. Um, I, I, I own a shop in Roswell, Georgia. We've been here for about 10 years. Uh, we've been using the auto vitals for coming up on our, our two year anniversary. Uh, we really didn't get good at it until maybe a year and a half ago. And then obviously that changes. We've got uh, six bays. Uh, I've got four and a half up techs. Um, trying to hire another one. And that's been our, probably been a year long process where I'm just not finding what I need. Uh, and I've got uh, three manager slash service advisors that kind of on the front end. So. so that's pretty cool. So one day you're going to have to go and explain to me where you can go and get a half a technician, but that's a story for another episode, I'm sure. Okay. And so what yeah. I wanted to do is, is, is go ahead. So let's get back to that because that's an important aspect of how we've implemented. And I'll talk about what I did with that technician and he doesn't have a full-time turn and wrenches role, but he's got a very important role as it relates to inspections and auto parts. Okay, so if you would just hold that in the parking lot for now and let's go through here a little bit further. So when you're going to become a digital shop, you know, there's, you know, a lot of change in process that goes on in this. And what I'd like to know is that, you know, what was the reaction of your staff when you said that we are going to go on this journey and we're going to do it together? Sure. Uh, you know, the first thing is I had been trying for years to grow our average repair order. So you know, that was a strategy long before we went to auto vitals. And the reason is I've only got six bays. I've got a really small parking lot. So we needed to be um, you know, getting more value out of the cars that were here. So we had had some success. We were growing our average repair order gradually, slowly over a long period of time. Um, but I knew that other shops were doing better. I knew that our, our numbers weren't even close to some industry averages. So, uh, you know, I had, I charted, I started with another uh, digital inspection company, did that for about a year, probably four or five years ago, and run into you and, and Uva at various conferences and heard a lot about Auto Vital, so we jumped on uh, two years ago. And so, um, you know, we had, I, I announced that we had meetings, we had conversations, we had, you know, sort of beginning training classes to get all the service advisors and all the techs up to speed. Um, that was sort of how we started. Um, I think we started kind of slow. Uh, again, those first six months, we saw we moved the needle a little bit, but not a lot. And so that's kind of where I learned maybe Part of, how I, part of how I implemented that, that's where I learned that how I would do it a little bit differently today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step back a little bit like a little bit earlier. And so, you know, we talked about Marty Mace and Marty Mace took a completely different path than you did. So 
At the time that Marty was actually introduced to Auto Vitals, he was basically working in a franchise shop as a general manager, the number one volume franchise shop in the franchise by a huge amount. And what he did is he decided to go a little bit differently. And, and when I say there's no valid reason not to do it today, what he did is on a 4th of July where they had twice as many cars as they normally do, he basically said, all right, guys, I'm going to come in here today. We said this is coming. You know, you've had the tablets laying in front of you. What I'm going to do today is there's no more paper in the shop today. Everything is going to be done from the tablet. Those paper inspections that you used to do before, you're going to do them on the tablet. So this is a true case of ripping off the Band-Aid and just making it work. And so, you know, if you can imagine doing that into your shop, it takes a special personality first to go ahead and actually dive off and do that, but it also takes being able to overcome some objections that go along. So he did this and he did it very well and he did it very successfully just by ripping off the Band-Aid saying, this is what we're going to do. This is what's in it for you. And by the way, we're going to do it today. And if we can do it today, we can do it on any any day. And so that's that's where his journey started. And since then, you know, he, he implemented that at that shop. And then a few years later, he had the opportunity to go ahead and, and buy his own location. And now what he did is he took lessons learned from that. And I guess he didn't learn very much by it because he went into his own location and he ripped off the Band-Aid and did it again. So Marty is kind of the exception to the rule, but it's proof positive. And we've got hundreds of others that do it exactly the same way. And then we got, you know, Dennis here that I want to talk about his journey because his journey is more of the common thing that goes on in the shop process. So we got one that's kind of like, you know, taking an adult and getting on a bicycle and just running off and, and riding. And, you know, he gets to his destination really quick. And we got another one that kind of paddle walks a little bit and then gets on a bicycle and takes a shorter trip and then a longer trip and a longer trip. And you know, if they fall down, that's okay. They get up and look around and make sure nobody's seen them and then they go on. But both of them have got to the same destination. They're fully implemented. They're using the tools, a large part of them, and they're using it to solve problems in their shop. So let's go on a little bit further. But the important thing is, is this is like the tale of two implementations. And while there's no right way or there's no wrong way, getting to the end of the journey in the quickest way possible is what's going to help you get money in the bank, solve problems and so on. So with that being said, Marty couldn't be here with us, but um, we'll get him on a, a, another future show to go through some of this and why he did it. So tell me a little bit about when you uh, got the staff to start using the system. When it comes to the internal chat, any kind of struggles or communications you had with them to start using that very important part of the tool and why you know you explain to them what's in it for them to use it i wish i could say we were really good at that um good news bad news is my shop is really small we're six days my service advisors we have a service desk actually in the shop so there's a kind of a bullpen where the service advisors are working so um, that internal chat functionality may not be as important to us because you know i can service advisor can say hey bob hey bill Right, because they're right there. Um, but we do use it to, you know, you know I, I've never done a, a No Talk Tuesday, uh, and I've heard other shop owners talk about doing a No Talk Tuesday. Uh, but, but we do, you know, send reminders to the techs, hey, come see me, let's talk more about this, give me some more information. But I, I would say of all, the, of all the things that are you know, within Auto Vitals, that's not at the top of the list of the things that we're using all the time. Um, but it, it, it's nice to remind them. It's nice to send them the parts are here. Uh, I'm talking to me. I got a question, that kind of thing. But it's not so I'm going to ask you to go ahead and use your imagination a little bit. Now, let's say that you've grown your shop to five times the size, and maybe your office is in one building and your shop in another. Can you go ahead and tell them the benefits that they need to use the chat system at that particular point? Well, I mean, I, mean, I believe it or not, that's Part of my plan here. I, there's a, a building nearby that I'd like to be a part of my shop. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the best thing I guess I would say is that it, you're documenting everything. So you sort of have an audit trail of all the conversations that, that have happened. Um, you know, there's it's, it's it's a whole lot easier to you know 
I don't know. I, I think you have better communication, better documentation, uh, fewer mistakes in that communication process when you're doing it in writing versus, you know, yelling across the shop. Um, so, so certainly that's a benefit that I could see. Uh, being important. Um, the other thing is, you know, as much as I would like a single service advisor and a single technician to go cradle the grave on a ticket on a work order, there are instances when other service advisors have to jump in. So having that detailed communication documented on that on that vehicle uh, for that technician is another another big benefit. So basically, they they put the information there one time. It's used over and over by multiple different people without having to have extra conversations and so on. And so do you agree with a lot of other shop owners that, that talk about it is that, you know, using this communication instead of having the technicians kind of gang up behind the service rider and, and stand there and, and stare at them while they're on the phone and stuff like that, there's a huge time savings benefit in here. So it is a change in process to go ahead and get used to, but there's other added benefits that, you know, as you start digging into it that um, you'll actually discover. And actually, I want to kind of, as we go forward, I want to start digging into this these topics a little bit more in depth to go ahead and actually talk about the thing that's what's in it for the service writer, what's in it for the customer, what's in it for the technician and so on. So everybody that's watching, they can go in and learn some things to actually explain the why to their shop before they get into the how that they're gonna do it. And so the next thing is, is that, you know, we get a lot of people that are a little bit reluctant to go ahead and use dual service advisors for the monitors or, <laughs> dual monitors for the service advisors. Can you go ahead and explain a little bit about how you're using them, if you're using them, and, and the benefits of such? So yeah, we are, uh, absolutely. We've been using them from day one. Um, it, the cost for an extra monitor and then a, a stand to put that extra monitor, probably you're talking about 125, 130 bucks. So uh, we are using them. Uh, you know, our, the service advisors ju are juggling all day long. They're juggling inspections and they're juggling, in our case, ProTracker, our shop management software, and they're going back and forth between the two. So clearly there's a great interface between AutoVitals and, and ProTracker, but you gotta, you gotta be looking at both. Um, you know, throw that, throw into that, that you're, you're pulling up all data, you're pulling up Identifix, you're looking at, you know, various vendor websites and tracking down parts. So, um, you know, when we're managing shop workflow, 90% of what we do is on auto vitals. But when we're building tickets and ordering parts and, uh, you know, all that, that's, that's all on, on ProTracker and Identifix and all that and all that. So you, you just got too many balls in the air to try to do it all on one monitor. And so do you find there's having auto vitals open at all the time so you can see the today's vehicle page, especially the technician view, you know, besides editing and other things you do, do you find that there's any advantage to that when it comes to the process change and being able to manage your labor inventory in a visual method versus just um, kind of more or less by the seat of your pants to hope and prayer method? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's at a glance, you know, you look at the, the technician view and again, we're not on TVTX, so some of the labor inventory comments, conversations we're not, I'm not as familiar with, but even with traditional auto vitals, I can see how many hours each tech has, has booked for the day and where they are for the week. And, um, so that's a great way to assign tickets. I mean, you, you sometimes you'll look and, I, and I'll do this when I'm not, I'm not the guy out there running this every day, but you know, you'll come in and see one technician has seven, eight, nine tickets. Well, the next guy's only got two. Well, if you look at the top and realize, well, he's doing an engine and a, and a front end replacement. He's got, 32 hours on his two tickets. Uh, so, so that's, that's helpful. But yeah, I mean, we, we, we live, it's funny as we, when we implemented auto vitals, for the most part, we've always lived in a technician view. That's changed. My service advisors and, and they're getting better at using it. They now prefer um, workflow view. I mean, they, they, they're so confident that the technicians have been assigned correctly and they have a handle on what everybody's working on. They're thinking about what's done, what needs to go, what needs, you know, where are we on? So, so while we started off more in workflow view for tech view, I'd say today we spend probably technician view and workflow view. Cool. So 
I'd also, you know, the process change that you make in the shop, I'd also like to go through, you know, there is a change in process when you when the customer drops off their vehicle. I'd like you to talk about that a little bit and talk about even if there's a different process you have to implement since COVID because a lot of these conversations for drop-off are taking place without the customer ever coming into building. Uh, yeah, we don't, we have, we rarely have waiting customers. In addition to only having a six pay shop, I've only, I've got a very small lobby. So we, we tend to discourage waiting customers. Um, you know, I, I, I the, the, the big thing on the, on the drop-off conversation is, is letting that customer know, Hey, by the way, we're going to, we're going to get your oil change done, but we're also going to do a comprehensive vehicle inspection on your car. We're going to send a text. I make sure I've got the right cell phone. We're going to send you an inspection on your car and, and it's going to have, you know, anything that we see, all the good things and bad things and anything we think needs attention. That's sort of the conversation. Had that conversation a thousand times, you know, across the shop, we've had that conversation 15,000 times. Never, ever, ever, ever does a customer object to getting a digital inspection. Oh, okay. That's great. I, I, I look forward to that. You just got to let them know you're going to get a text not going to be from a friend of yours. It's going to be from us. And, and, and then feedback. I used to tell people that feedback, positive feedback on digital inspections was 50 to one, positive to negative. It, it's 500 to one. I mean, I, we never get anybody that complains about the inspection that we send them. Uh, but I think it's real, real important. Let them know they're going to get that digital inspection. We do that you know, with every customer. So, oh. You know, that's about what, um, you know, the, the scenario always is if you manage their expectations, let them know what's going to happen and then do what you told them is going to happen. Then it turns into a positive experience instead of them thinking that you went shopping on their vehicle. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I talked about earlier that you know, we have, we have grown our ARO for 10 years. I mean, we've done a good job of growing our ARO every year and we always grew it in little increments. Um, I was always worried that, you know, I'm gonna all of a sudden start getting negative reviews on Google and Yelp that, oh my God, they're just trying to sell me something. That's never happened. It's never happened when we started selling, you know, preventive maintenance services. It never happened when we started, you know, just doing a better job on regular paper inspections. And it certainly hasn't happened when we do digital inspections. I, 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 if I've got, Five or six hundred reviews out there on, on Google and Yelp and next door. Once, twice, three times, somebody said they're trying to sell me something. In the meantime, I've doubled my ARO. So obviously, we are selling more, but the perception nobody ever perceives us as pushing things they don't. And that, that boils down to that particular conversation, though. You're explaining what's in it for them. You're saying, ma'am or sir, it's our job to make sure you've got a safe, comfortable, and dependable vehicle. We do that by performing inspection. We are going to send you the results. So you're taking a proactive, positive, re, you know, path to go and let them know what's in it for them. Right. And it's just, it's never cool. happened. It's, it's, it's and so, no downside. So here's one of the biggest process changes that people seem to have a struggle with. And it's almost like they don't believe us when we talk about the Amazon rule. And that is sending the inspection results to the customer, letting them look, look them over, and then letting them call you to go over the results. And then also in the same token is when you go over the results, when the customer calls, don't ask them if they looked at the inspection sheet ask them some open-ended questions about a topic or two to get the conversation going. So could you go ahead and, and describe the process change and, and what it meant to go down that path and, and struggles and, and so on? Yeah, we're just, I mean, I think traditional service advisors, you know, you know what the car needs, you know what you want to sell them, you've already built your estimate, you're ready to go, go, go. Uh, that's just how it has always worked. And one of my service advisors said after we were a few months into this with, with auto vitals, he said the hardest thing for him, one of the hardest things for him was to let that clock go for 20 minutes, to, to, to let, the, let the customer look at that inspection for 20 minutes. And he said the, the proof's in the pudding though. He goes, when you do that, when you give them 20 minutes to, to look at that inspection, uh, it, it, it sells itself. You didn't, when, you, when you're on the phone with a customer, you don't start walking through 
service package by service package what the car needs, you say, do you have any questions? Is there any anything I, you know, would you like for us to go ahead and take care of this today? And the total investment is, you know, $1,254 and we can have it done by the end of the day. So, um, yeah, so, you know, the service advisor said it best is that once you get comfortable with letting that customer look at that inspection, it's going to be a whole lot easier to close that sale. So. Nice. A couple of people have chatted in. They'd like to see if you can go ahead and maybe get closer to your mic or, or get your volume up a little bit so you're a little bit hard to hear. So, so that's okay. The Mr. Wilson look will be just perfectly fine as long as, as, long, as long as I can hear you. Awesome. So... Describe a little bit the importance of, um, you know, switch to having the inspections performed as a first line on your repair order to let the technicians know that, you know, I've had the conversation with the customer and they know this is going to happen. So that way, you know, they've got a good feeling for what's going on. So best practice is to have the inspection labor line as the first line on repair order, or at least a labor line. Are you using that process? And was that a process change that you had to, you know, work with a little bit to get them to put in place? So we do it a little differently. And the first on our work orders, and this is, I think, pretty standard with Protractor, and I know there's a lot of Protractor shops, is, is going to be the concern that the customer came in for. So if they came in, we're the first thing on the top of that work order is going to be, um, you know, brake noise, brake vibration, coolant in my driveway, whatever the case might be. So that's the first thing that we want our, our technicians to look at. Uh, second is th th then the next would be the comprehensive vehicle inspection. And as I've explained it to many customers is, I don't wanna sell you a cooling system repair, whether it's a water pump or a radiator or whatever the case might be, if there are other big issues with your car. We wanna give you a comprehensive view of the car before we sell you a $1,200 cooling system repair and then come back and say, oh, by the way, you need $900 worth of brakes. So uh, we, we want our technician to address that concern, the primary concern first, and then do the, the, the inspection second. And we're going to do all that before we talk to the customer. I don't want to call the customer and say, you need a $1,200 cooling system repair, and then wait 20 minutes and call back and say, oh, by the way, you, you need brakes all the way around. So we, we want to get both accomplished before we send it over to the customer, um, but we don't necessarily just do the, the, the vehicle inspection first. We, we want to address the concern first. And is the inspection that you want them to perform, perform an actual line on a repair order, or did you just say every car is going to get an inspection, that's how it is? Oh, absolutely. It's a line on the repair order. It's a labor line that the technician gets paid for, and, and, it, and it kicks off. And we only use a couple of different inspections, but it kicks off so they can go to their tablet and they can start going down the path of that inspection. Awesome. And so, you know, tell us a little bit about the feedback that you got from customers when you started sending the inspection results and also other digital communications besides that, maybe workflow step messages, thank yous, um, you know, sure. whatever. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, obviously step one is the, is the digital inspections. And, and I said a minute ago that our feedback, I can literally think of one customer whoever complained about his inspection. And, and it, it was because we recommended a transmission service and he should have known, we should have known in his eyes that he had his entire transmission replaced at the dealer a few months earlier, therefore he didn't need the transmission service. So feedback on that is 101. Uh, the other thing that drove me to this whole digital inspection world is people don't answer their phone anymore. Um, I, you know, I get 10, 10 spam calls a day on my phone, and I think most people probably do. It's just the world communicates more by text than anything else. So when we can send a text message to say your car is ready for pickup, they love that. Um, you know, we don't have a whole lot of back and forth chats um, with the customer, uh, you know, in the communication channel, uh, but just the, the inspection and the pickup notification, um, those two are fantastic. Um, and the feedback has been all positive. So um, I know that you don't have the guided inspection right now because you're still on the legacy TVPX, but I know that you've heard a lot about it. So my question is, is are you going to upgrade yours current inspection so you can take advantage of it? 
or would you recommend a shop that is brand new to start out with that, learn how to go ahead and do it, and then modify that to their own liking rather than doing what you did and starting with creating your own from scratch? Yeah, I want to get to the guided inspection as soon as I can. Um, as I, you and I were talking earlier, I, I told you we've had a six or seven week window here where every day I've had, I've, I've had people out and it's just been impossible to move on and start down the process. Uh, as great as Auto Vitals has been for us, um, I see huge benefits in the guided aspect of it. Uh, I love the idea of when I'm taking pictures of uh, brake pads, I'm doing it from the same angle, with, doesn't matter which technician's doing the doing that inspection, he takes the same picture for every customer and then also for every inspection so that you can, I can see you know, three months ago, six months ago, nine months ago, here's what our picture looked like when we were looking at those brake pads and here's what it looks like today. So, um, you know, I've got some technicians and I'm sure everybody does who are better at doing inspections than others. I think the guided mode will help get everybody at the same level. Uh, that's that's my hope, and so um, you know when things have settled down here. I seem to be get, getting close to back to where I was staffing wise, and hopefully we can get moving on on PVPX here in the next few weeks. Cool. And Monica just chatted in that they like to do their vehicle health inspection first, so the service rider can start working on that while the technician does does the rest of it. So you know, different strokes for different folks for sure. Um, I know other shops that if there's anything on the vehicle that requires any testing or diagnostics, they do it first so nothing gets disturbed during the inspections where they can't duplicate something because the wiring harness got moved or so on. So there's some different things to think about, but you know, the main thing is, is that every vehicle gets an inspection and everything that's found on the inspection gets estimated and presented to the customer and then it gets followed up on if it doesn't. So uh, that's some great information to go ahead and have in there. So let's talk a little bit about lessons learned. So, you know, we talked about Marty just jumping in there and, and getting it done. And we talked about you, you know, you took a more careful plotted path. Um, anything you can think of, any valid reason that a shop shouldn't just go ahead and whenever they go ahead and get ready to sign up, just jump in there and do it, or if they add a new employee to their staff, is there any reason why they'd want to get them to come in and start working and then go ahead and introduce the digital process to them over an extended period of time rather than just ripping off the Band-Aid, so to say? Yeah, so if, if regarding a new employee, that's just how we do business. So if it's a brand new employee, they're, they're gonna get a tablet the first day they walk in the door. Unfortunately, I, I haven't had a whole lot of, you know, I've only had one new employee since we've implemented this. Um, and so right away, we taught him, this is how we do things. Um, you know, for me, uh, again, it was two years ago when we started, I, I had, we had an after hours training class and I brought in pizza and I had the same car up in the air and I had five technicians and two service advisors and we're all going around the car attempting to inspect it together. Um, I tried to, I think I started with trying to do everybody at once in a group setting and that didn't work. Um, we weren't going to go as fast as Marty went, but uh, for us, it was a better idea to sort of get, you know, get your, your best tech. And, and, and it was, I, I took a technician, that four and a half techs I talked about, half of his job was being my digital inspections manager. So he was outstanding at it. He got it. He understood it. He saw the value in this digital inspection. So I sort of made him my inspections manager. Um, I wish I had done that sooner. Um, and then we, we, the techs who tended to be doing the most inspections, we focused on them first and got them up to speed and got them to be very, very good at doing inspections. And then we kind of slowly worked through the staff over a period of time to get everybody doing great inspections. So, so um, I, you know, last week's digital shop talk show was about a shop foreman or shop manager. I, I, when I watched that, it reminded me of putting my inspections manager in place. Uh, his job is to train everybody on inspections, to review the inspections, to go back to the technician if, there's, if it's not right, to edit those inspections. And what ends up happening for us is when, when that shop, when that inspections manager has reviewed that, cleaned it up, edited that inspection, 
he, he, he clicks, you know, to the service manager, the service writer who's working on that said, hey, the Ford Focus is ready to go. So I don't have my service advisor spending 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes going through and asking questions and scratching their head and editing pictures on it. They're ready to send it over to the customer, wait that 20 minutes. And while they're waiting the 20 minutes, they're, they're building an estimate. So they're not, my service managers aren't, and they can, they're absolutely capable and occasionally certainly have to edit inspections. But I got my inspections manager kind of streamlining that for them. And so that brings up another question with all the COVID and everything else going on. Did you go ahead and teach somebody else that role so that you had a hit by the bus plan in case that person was out? Uh, yeah, John I, Long, that's for you. I, I just didn't have a hit, three people hit by the bus plan, which is what, what kind of screwed us up for the last six, six or seven weeks. But um, yeah, so every single technician can do an inspection. Every service advisor plus my inspections manager can edit an inspection. So there's no, yeah, there's not one person that knows everything. Um, it used to be when we first started, I'm the one that cobbled together our inspection. You know, you were my trainer and we, I took and cut and paste different, different sections from different inspections within the library. And, uh, but now, you know, I have a, I have a shop manager and a cert and, and my inspections manager, they're free to make changes to edit, add and subtract from our standard inspection, they, and they do that all the time. So we've got pretty much, all of us can do multiple things there. Cool, so let's uh, kind of shift gears a little bit and let's go ahead and dig in a little bit deeper into the, the process. And I wanna get into more of the explanation of what's in it for your employees for using the different new tools that we come up with. So, you know, if you had to do this all over again and you were going to prep your staff on what we're going to be doing, what are some things you would do in advance? Would you go ahead and test your Wi-Fi network? Would you set up your dual monitors, take pictures, you know, describe how you would go ahead and get them all fired up and ready to go that, you know, this is what we're doing and this is what the end goal is going to look like and why we're doing it. I was so excited when I signed up. I think I came back from that convention in St. Petersburg, and, and, and before the end of the weekend, I had half a dozen new monitors here. So I was, I, I had the equipment all set and ready to go. Um, you know, what's in it for them? You know, obviously, we started the training process. The, the biggest, obvious, most simple thing is we're going to do an inspection, and I'm going to pay you a half hour to do it. You know, in, in our old world, when we were doing paper inspections, that was all part of the oil change thing and they would do the oil change and they get paid a half hour for that. And then they would do the paper inspection and they got paid nothing. So to do a digital inspection with an oil change, they're getting paid an hour. Uh, and so, so that's an incremental half hour you're gonna get. Uh, our average labor hours per ticket, I think, is up about an hour and a half, two hours in the last year and a half. So um, if techs are motivated by money, and most of them are, um, the proof is in the foot. I mean, they're, they're getting, you know, an extra hour and a half a ticket they're getting. And I, and I have, you know, I've done this analysis and I've got guys that are making you know, 20, 25% more this, this year than they did last year uh, based on the volume and based on better inspections and selling more stuff. So that, that's what's in it for them. And, and they see the feedback. I mean, they, you know, we get a positive review um, I share it with the technicians. Um, if you go to my Google page, we got 4.8 stars, and that's based on 400 reviews, 400 Google reviews, ballpark. And the, this, this, the most common term that customers write is oil change when they're writing a review. That phrase, oil change. The second most common term is inspection. So the feedback from customers on the inspections on Google is the second most, that's the thing you're talking about. That's the, that's what our customers are talking about. So the customer, you know, the employees see that and they see it in their paychecks. Um, they see it probably, I'll, I'll say they see it in, in, in their skill set because we're selling stuff that maybe we weren't selling a year and a half, two years ago. And they're, and they're getting experience doing those services that they might not have gotten two years ago. So for the technician, basically more hours per repair order is less trips to the parking lot less racking and unracking. Um, using the internal chat is less time wasted standing behind somebody. 
um, getting the inspection results to the customer for the service rider is letting the customer look it over on their own time frame and then come back in. So that's what I want to dive into, you know, is some of the things that's the what's in it for them, for your staff, for the process change they're going to have. Because, you know, just like, you know, authorization from the customer, authorization for repairs comes when perceived value exceeds cost. Well, adoption of new processes in the shop it takes place the same way. When there is a perceived value for the individual person, adoption takes place a whole heck of a lot faster. And so describe how your staff responded when the change was announced. Were they excited also? And if there was barriers, what are the barriers that they threw up and how did you go in and remove the roadblocks or did you blow them up, dig a hole underneath them? You know, how did you do that? I don't remember. I mean, I, I, I can think of, uh, of a couple former who were their former employees um, that were reluctant, okay? And, and in both cases, these were older gentlemen, you know, technology was not their thing. Um, one of those gentlemen retired, he's a fantastic employee, he was with me for 10 years, loved him to death, he retired, but he just wasn't, you know, he was old school, didn't like that. I, I had a technician that was, was also old school and um, he, he just, he, didn't, didn't matter what I did, didn't matter what process, I mean, he was, he was going to be happy with his 25 hours a week. Probably my, you know, one of my, my lower paid employees, but nothing I could do was going to help him find anything wrong with that car that had 140,000 miles on it. Um, he just was happy cruising along and doing oil changes and brake tests. Um, that's really the only, I, I, that's the only road negative I got, but I mean, you know, you're introducing more work, you're introducing something new, you're introducing change, that's always going to meet with some resistance. Uh, but once we got into this, a month or two into this, and the numbers started going up and their paychecks started going up, um, you know, there's still some folks that don't do as well as we'd like them to do on their inspections, and that's a never-ending battle. Um, but, I mean, I got very little resistance, and, and I would say, I, I had a shop owner, an auto auto shop owner that actually stopped in here yesterday. His shop is eight or nine miles away from mine. And he used a term that I thought was good. He, his, he said his struggle with his shop was that some technicians are happy with mediocre. And that's, you know, if you're, if you're not challenged to, put, to do more hours, to make more money, you know, this is more work and you don't really want more work. So Especially in your shop where you're limited on base space and parking, you know, you've got to, they've got to produce. Otherwise, um, it's a, a big opportunity for improvement is, is I guess, what I would say. Just, he, he just said it so well is that some technicians are happy with mediocre. And, and, and the one tech that I got rid of, one of the nicest guys in the world, but he was happy with mediocre and he's not here anymore. Interesting. So now that you've uh, implemented the digital shop, can you think of any valid reason why a anybody would want to go ahead and put off doing this for a better time? You know, we can all, I mean, I've heard, I can't even tell you how many excuses I've heard, you know, I want to wait till after the moon comes up and the sun goes down and I'm waiting for after this holiday and I got to get into the next quarter because I'm too busy. You know, those are excuses, but I'm looking for, is there any valid excuse? Uh, so I, I have a valid excuse as to why my inspection rate was horrible for the last five or six weeks. And that is, you know, I had 46 days of unexpected absences from employees. So um, it, it was just, it was hard. I mean, we were, we were, so, so if you're not staffed, if you're, if you're fully, you know, there's, there's, there's work involved in this. There's change involved. There's training involved. You, you got to be staffed right. Um, so, so I would make sure that you're staffed right before you, before you attempt to take this on. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, I, I, like I said earlier, I, I, my goal was to grow ARO. I think as a shop owner, you got to be focused on that. You, it has to be important. And you realize that that's the, the, you know, the key to your success, the key to your profitability and growth is going to be bigger AROs. And so you got to be committed to it. And, and, you know, your staff's got to be stable. And, and then, and then you go. And, and the other thing I'll say is when I was on this show last fall, I said that we were probably only using 10 or 15% of the functionality within auto vitals. 
So we've made a huge leap. We're up to like 11 or 11 percent or 16 percent now. In other words, there's still a massive amount of auto vitals that we're not using, um, but there's still value, huge value in the 10 or 11 or 12 percent that we are using. So uh, you know, the workflow management, the digital inspections, the customer communication—that's all huge. Um, so I, I, you know, I would encourage you once your staff is stable, get going, get going. So, you know, after a shop is fully implemented, let's talk about what happens sometimes when you are short staff, you go ahead and stop doing certain things you know you should be doing. So you slack up on your inspection and so on. Any feedback? I mean, you just went through this recently. You, you know, you, you had three people off and now you're just kind of in, in you know, survival mode. Should you go ahead and, and stop doing inspections or you should you go ahead and try and gate the door and slow it down and not change your processes? Great question. Uh, where were you six weeks ago, eight weeks ago? Um, we, we did gate the door I and mean, I turned off advertising for the most part. I, I you know, there's no, there's no Yelp advertising going on. Um, you know, we put a, uh, you know, we have a Kapui website. We put a, a, a governor on that. You know, you can't make an appointment until, you know, three days from now, five days from now. So whatever, whatever the work will look, look like, we put a governor restriction on those cars coming in the door. Um, you know, when you're when you go from a, a four hundred fifty dollar ARO to a six hundred and fifty dollar ARO, which is what we did in, in February and March in that ballpark, it, it takes longer to get cars out the door. I mean, you got you got cars that are here, in, you know, three days, five days, and that was that was new for us. That was sort of unusual. So, I would just be, um, you know, if you're going to build your ARO, you're going to have longer lead times and, and be prepared for that. So, uh, I would have I would have done a better job of let's stay on top of the inspections and turned on the restrictions and the governors sooner rather than later. Awesome. So I'm going to kind of compare and con contrast the two different methods, and I'm just going to give you my takeaway on this. So you and many others have said by instituting the processes properly, you know that you're going to get a higher ARO, you're going to grow weekly revenue. In most cases, you do it without adding additional staff. So what that really equates to is putting more money in the bank. Would you agree with that? Uh, yes. Okay, and so that's when I look at the two different methods, I'm like, we need a hybrid approach because if I'm gonna put more money in the bank to do things I need to do, like equipment, recruit new employees, raises, insurance, um, our, our new tax structure will be experiencing here pretty soon, I'm afraid. Um, you know, we wanna go ahead and get the more money in the bank sooner than later. So this comes where we get to the hybrid approach of onboarding and also recruiting new employees. So does that logic make sense? The sooner you go ahead and, and rip off the Band-Aid and, and, and heal up whatever it is, expose it to the air and move on, the, the faster and the longer you're gonna reap the benefits. Yeah, but you know, I had, I had an old boss in a former life and he had a cliche and I've heard it elsewhere as well, is we gotta fix the airplane while we're flying it. And so, um, you know, we had a shop and we had 60, 70, 80 cars a week coming in and um, we were implementing this big change. So we, we, I, can't, I can't afford to take the airplane down to fix it. So I, I feel like I, we were too slow. I could certainly go faster. I would recommend some things that would help you go faster. I just, when you talk about the Band-Aid approach uh, and, and what Marty went through, that, that does not sound attractive to me. So, <laughs> So go ahead and explain a few of the things that you would have done differently and how you would, might advise them to go ahead and do differently. Let's explore that a little bit. We've got some time. Sure. Uh, I, I wouldn't try to get into detailed tablet inspection training as a group. I, I think, you know, finding that technician who's really, you know, in my case, it, it took us a while to do this, but getting that technician that's really, really good at it, that understands it, that gets technology, uh, you know, my younger guys, my younger technicians were all way better at doing digital inspections with an iPad in their hands than the older technicians. So step one, I would have identified that technician champion sooner rather than later. Step two, I, you know, high level group training to, you know, from a strategy perspective, why we're doing this, 
this is we're, we're going down this path and everybody's got to be on board is great but i i would have just gotten into a one-on-one -on -one training soon um you know get one guy completely up to speed and move on to the next one if you've been doing paper inspections you know flipping the switch and going to digital is not going to change your business immediately so you know get into it a, a, over a period of a week a couple of weeks where you get everybody up to speed um Another big change is, you know, I talk about the fact that we were only using 10, 11, 12% of auto vitals. Well, one of the things that we weren't really using was the, the business, the BCP, the, the business control panel. There's phenomenal metrics in there, inspection rate, average pictures taken, average recommendations made for inspection, inspection sent. There's a thousand metrics in there, but there's five or six or seven of those key metrics I wish I had been paying attention to those sooner rather than later. Um, it, it's, you know, when, when we go back and look at the last six or seven weeks where our business took a bit of a dip, uh, oh, by the way, that dip leagues ahead of where we were a year ago, but, you know, a dip from the, the highs that we reached earlier this year. When you go back and look at the inspection metrics, it's, it's overwhelming. Why did your, why did your revenue go down? Look at look, your ARO went down because your inspection rate went down. The number of pictures you were taking went down. The number of pictures you were editing went down. The motorist research time went down. So that would be, you know, make, make sure as a new shop, you're getting up to speed and familiar with those metrics and you're looking at them every day. You almost like you anticipated where I was going next. Isn't that something? So what we want to do is we want to talk about is, is that breaking this down, the onboarding process down into four chunks, and this is a process that you can use and measure whether it's you're coming on full on board and you've never seen auto vitals before or you're bringing on a new staff member. So in the first two to four weeks, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and get them to do and measure certain things. So we're going to call this the quick win step on, you know, you know, in the, in the two to four week range. And what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and define some goals for the quick wins. And normally this is going to be where you define exactly how you want an inspection topic done. I want this picture taken. I want this note here. I want every time this is done, I want it to be estimated and the service writer is going to present it to the customer. So pick out one or two topics that you can get a quick win on. So it might be brake fluid flushes. It might be wheel alignments, whatever it is. And then everybody that's doing inspection do the exact same thing over and over again. So that way you can produce some results right from day one. So we also want to go ahead and, and set some goals for what's going on. And Dennis, if you disagree with any of these metrics, um, these are things that you know you probably need to measure right when you go in there, is set some goals for the percentage of vehicles that are going to get inspected. You know, if, if you're not doing inspections, you can't do anything with them. You know, set goals for the inspections that are actually sent to the customer. There's no point in doing inspection if you're not going to send it out. And then go ahead and do some audits on the inspections as a team. So that way you can start talking about together what good looks like. And everybody should be telling you, you know, how they can go ahead and help each other improve in the process. So do you agree that those are things that can be done and measured within that and mastered within that first two to four week range? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, sometimes people try and I'm guilty of this a lot. I want everything to be perfect. I want everything to be buttoned up. I want every inspection to be exactly right before I get going on it. And I, I think that's hard to do. And I think that may have been part of my slow ramp up. So I think quick wins, get something rolling, but it, you know, monitor it, watch it, train on it, review it with your team, fix it for the next day. Yeah. So perfection is the enemy. Is the enemy, and, and good enough is is what you have to work on and then improve from there. And so now we're getting into the next four weeks. You know, this is where we want to be in the four week range, and that is building consistent inspections. So here, what you want to do is make sure that the inspections, when they're being done, the average number of recommendations made per inspection across the shop is in a, in a uniform, acceptable level. I call that need spotting. And then also set a percentage for the number of pictures that are actually edited before they go to the customers. So you can see that we're building on that initial foundation and set a goal for percentage of inspections sent versus total repair orders. 
So the first one was inspection sent that were done. And now this is inspection sent per total repair orders that went through the shop. So you see we're building on that layer as we go forward. So anything in that second group on there that you see that shouldn't be able to be obtained within that time period? No, and, and again, I think that, you know, there, there's six or eight measures that I depend on every single week. Um, and so uh, there's, there's probably more out there that I could, I could be getting value out of today that I'm not. But, uh, and if you're looking at, you know, fix, fix, get rolling on the first three or four measures, and then get rolling on the next three or four measures. And, and I think you'll, you know, you're absolutely going to see uh, improved results. And so, and again, this is for new employees on an existing auto bottle shop or, or other ones. And now just because these say two to three weeks and four weeks and six weeks, that doesn't mean if you haven't secured your attainment level and proven out that you're there, that doesn't mean to wait to the six week mark to go ahead and step on the next step. So to say, this is just a logical process. And when you get the attainment level, don't wait, just move on to the next one. So, you know, there's no reason to go ahead and wait. So the next step is, you know, getting in the six week range is to go ahead and, and engage the motorist for maximum effectiveness. And how we're gonna measure that is specifically by focusing on our average motorist research time. So this is a real important metric and this is how well lots of processes are working. So if your motorist research time is good, your drop off conversation is good, the quality inspection is good, the customer knows what to do with the inspection when they get it. You're sending them content that makes sense to them and they're actually engaged in it. So by the time you get to the six week range, would this be a, in your opinion, a good metric to go and add to the mix and start measuring? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, you know, when I was on the show last fall, in the days that followed, I got eight or nine calls from shop owners that, that wanted to talk to me. And one of the first questions I would ask them was, you know, what's your motorist research time? And I was hearing things like 200 seconds, 250 seconds, 220 seconds. My motorist research time, it's dipped recently, but it's, it's 500, 550, 600. So if you're doing great inspections and editing those pictures and you're giving something to the consumer, to your customer, that's compelling for them to spend 600 seconds on it, 500 seconds on it, that's a great leading indicator that your ARO is gonna go up and your revenue is gonna go up. If they're only spending 200 seconds on their, on their uh, motorist research time, then you haven't given them much to think about. They, they're not interested. And I find that's about, you know, how many pictures are you taking? Are you editing? Are you adding arrows and circles and comments to those pictures? Uh, I've seen inspections where there's a picture of a, 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 of a busted CV boot. You know, about 90 to 95% of my customers have no idea what a CV boot is. Would have been a good idea to put a note on there saying, this is your CV axle, this boot is slinging grease. And so give them a compelling inspection. Give them a reason to spend five or six minutes or 10 minutes looking at the inspection. And so, you know, what we've learned over time is when you're editing them pictures, if the four elements are on them, you know, on the picture directly is area focus. What is the picture of what needs to be done and reason to buy today? If you have them four elements on it, you've got a win combination. But um, again, you can measure that when you do the audit, which is one of the earlier weekly, you know, things that we talked about. So this is an important one and it's kind of in there, in there by itself. And by the time you get to the six to eight week range, what you should start be doing is increasing your revenue through labor inventory management. And so here's the KPIs that you're gonna be measuring then. It's gonna be set a goal for the percentage of jobs completed on the tablet, very important, so the service writer can see what's going on. Set an average of the workflow steps moved per repair order. That way you know the service writer is changing the workflow steps as they move it over to edit and then move it over to waiting for approval, maybe to, waiting for work finished, maybe even parts ordered on hold. So is the service rider using the workflow to manage it, which you mentioned earlier, your service riders are, are starting to dig into that. And then also setting a goal for service advisor efficiency. So these are, you know, the last four things in that particular step to go ahead and make sure you've got a really good, solid onboarded staff. Yeah, anything, so anything in there that doesn't make sense or... Those are some metrics where I'm not all the way up to right yet. 
but we're not necessarily using a, but you know, prior to that, yeah, I agree with all the, the steps in the process. So on your journey to New York City, you're still wandering back and forth on a holiday trip through the countryside. Awesome. So that, that's good. So as far as time-wise, we're right, right about on time. We've covered a lot of ground. You uh, provided a lot of really good information. I'd like to encourage people to go ahead and, and keep this discussion going. We're going to move over to the Facebook forum and go ahead and post it in there. Dennis, if you'd be so kind, I'm going to be watching in there for, for questions and stuff. I hope that you'll join me in there to go and answer any questions that have come up as far as how to do it, why to do it. You know, maybe they can go ahead and throw up some objections that their staff might have and we can help them overcome them objections. Um, but um, overall, you covered a lot of ground and you, you actually provided a lot of really good detail that I know will help a lot of people. I always, always happy to do so. Awesome. And so that being said, I'd like to go ahead and make sure that everybody knows they can go over to the Digital Shop Talk Facebook group. That's where we'll be carrying on this discussion. Um, you might even go ahead and scan that QR code. If you're not a current member, you know, answer the questions and then go ahead and join us in there. This is a closed group, so it's not meant for, you know, the average motorist to get in there and understand what we're doing because they might perceive that we're, you know, working on, 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 on things that, you know, who knows, um, you know, the um, public is a little fickle sometime. And what we'd also like you to do is there's a ton of prior episodes in here, which David or um, Dennis has been so kind to go and partake with us in the past, you know, that are on the digital shop talk radio. And that can be found by going to autovitals.com forward slash radio. And there is a wealth of information in there by a whole bunch of people and that are really good shop operators. They're people just like you. They've been through the struggles. Um, you know, they're going through staffing issues. They're going on through onboarding. They're, you know, you name it, they've been through it. You know, they talk about different things on using CRM to go ahead and, and keep those customers coming back on workflow management and so on. So I'm going to encourage you to go ahead and um, do that. Also on that autovitals.com forward slash radio, if you're not already subscribed, you'll be able to go ahead and join us on the actual live Zoom here and be able to go ahead and, and send your questions in. So I highly encourage you to join there also. Um, so Dennis, do you have any parting comment that you'd like to move, make before we go ahead and, and end the discussion? No, uh, I mean, I, you know, you know I'm, I'm a big proponent. I hope that, you know, our learning is, our experience has helped and help others. Um, I mentioned the guy who came in yesterday to my shop. He owns a shop eight or nine miles away. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm happy to, as long as he's not a competitor nearby, I'm happy to chat with him on our experience. So, awesome. So thank so, you very uh, much, Bill. Uh, yeah, thanks for participating. And like I said, uh, I hope to go ahead and see some questions come in in the forum. And like I said, uh, we'll be sure to follow up. So, once again, I'd like to thank everybody that participated and joined us live today. And um, you know, go out there and, and Autobottle's whole goal is to go ahead and be the shop's success solution. And we're really passionate about enabling our clients to go ahead and be the most successful shop in their trade area. But we got to have some cooperation on your part to go ahead and, and use the tools and continue giving us some good solid feedback to make sure our, we're on target on everything we develop. So that being said, I'd like to go ahead and thank everybody and have a great day.